Hi my friends, it's Ro. Welcome back. Today we have a video that's a little bit different from the topics that we've been doing recently. We've had a lot of fun recently. We've done a lot of lighthearted videos, which I love to do. Today, unfortunately, we have a topic, as you can tell by the title, that's a little bit serious. So before we get started, I need to start with a trigger warning. If you have a loved one who is on death row, or who has a really long sentence or is a lifer and you struggle with anxiety, paranoia, fear that they'll never get out, that you have to bury them. If you had a loved one who was inside and did unfortunately passed away while they were inside and they served whatever sentence they got but it turned into a death sentence, this might not be the video for you. I love you for being here. You might want to click off of this one if it triggers you and just hop on the next one. So if you are interested in hearing this heart-wrenching story about the first man that was executed in Texas just last week after they reinstated executions, what they did to his fiance and how they treated her at the viewing after he was killed, it's heart-wrenching, but this needs to be shared. Please keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I am the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Wives and Families, the author of a book called The Comeback Code. We absolutely do not glorify or glamorize prison or prison wife life here, but I will teach you how to make the best out of this, frankly, really painful. This video is so hard to make and this situation is a reality check of our lives, unfortunately. Sometimes we live in denial and things like this are the big fat slap of reality. It's crushing and sometimes we need it, but really painful and hopefully one shot deal. In my haters video, a beautiful subscriber named Gemma posted asking me if I heard about this case. Let me read her comment. Ro, please use your platform and your just all around greatness to shine a light on what's going on in Texas right now. The treatment Danny got Billy Wardlow's fiance after he was executed on Wednesday is beyond disgusting and exactly what goes on. The video is on YouTube and we just want to make the world know what's going on and what we live daily day in and day out. Love you. You're amazing. So I said back to her, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I must live under a rock. I have no idea what you're talking about, but please send me the link. And she did. And as soon as she sent it, I was working my day job. I stopped for five minutes. I put on this video and I was crushed. I was nauseous. Now, let me start by saying this. I did not look into Billy's case. I don't know if he's innocent. I don't know if he's guilty. My heart breaks for his family. My heart breaks for everybody that's involved in this case. This has nothing to do with that. That is a different video altogether that I don't have the knowledge to make. What this video is about is how his fiance was treated and how her friends were treated at his memorial. They were treated as if they were the criminals. And every single day, people who support a loved one who's incarcerated, whether it be the significant other, the mother, the father, the daughter, the son, most specifically though, the significant other of somebody who's incarcerated gets treated like we are worse than the criminal because of our decision to stand by them, to be by the side of the person they love despite a mistake that they made in their past. We are all on this planet having a human experience, every single person on this planet that walks the face of this earth in 2020 is not perfect, has made a mistake. Nobody's perfect and it grosses me out and the way that the woman who was employed by the facility where this viewing of this body was happening, the way that she treated this mourning fiance, it does not matter how he was killed, why he was killed. In that moment, a woman was mourning the loss of her significant other and she was treated as if she was the dirt on the bottom of somebody's shoe. She was taunted. She was told never to do this if it happens again. If it happens again, what? Okay, let me calm myself down and read you guys the article that goes along with this. There is a video on YouTube. It is so whole crushing. I'll put some clips of it in here. Some of it is really hard to hear. I'll put subtitles. So this article was in Newsweek on July 10th, 2020. The author was Kalita Rahman. I believe, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. 
Billy Wardlow's fiance, Danielle Allen, says a church employee whose job involves comforting those who have lost loved ones through executions ruined her final moments with him. Oh, I have chills. A video provided by Newsweek showed Allen weeping over Wardlow's body inside Grace Baptist Church in Huntsville, Texas, shortly after he died from lethal injection. Wardlow was convicted for the 1992 fatal shooting of 82-year-old Carl Cole and received the lethal injection at the state penitentiary on Wednesday night. In the video, people were wearing yellow shirts with the message, abolish the death penalty, can be seen taking pictures as Alan grieves. I'm getting chills as I'm filming this and reading this, oof. A woman that Alan identified as Gina Bradford is heard telling people to stop taking pictures and not to wear the shirts next time. Next time? Excuse me, I have chills. And it's like 162 degrees in here because we don't have AC, but this just hits my heart. And I think anybody who's involved with a loved one who's in prison, especially those of us who, it's our reality. We could be the Danielle in this situation, grieving over our loved one's body because he was given a life or a death sentence to think about the pain and her final moments with the person that meant more to her than anybody else in the entire world. My God, I remember at my mother's wake, we had to wait a week between the day my mom died and the wake because of the way the days fell and family coming in from out of town. So that was the longest since my dad was nine years old that he hadn't seen my mother. They grew up next door neighbors fell in love at first sight, were the only ones that each other dated. The way that this funeral home was set up was you walked in the front door and you walked down a little hallway and there were two or three viewing rooms and my mother was in the first room on the right and they only let immediate family in first, maybe for the first 20 minutes or so. It was a gorgeous funeral home for a funeral home and they had these gorgeous white kind of French doors but there were no windows on them, they were shut and the director of the funeral home, this amazing woman, opened up the doors to let my siblings, myself and my father in. And my father ran like a little boy up to the casket because he hadn't seen my mom in a week. How dare anybody ruin that moment for a grieving spouse. This woman, Danny, Danielle did not, I'm sorry, her friend called her Danny, so I apologize. I don't know what she likes to be called. I wanna be respectful. I don't care how he died. It does not matter at that point. She is a grieving widow. The person that meant more to her than anybody else in the whole entire world was just killed. And it does not matter if it was cancer, if it was a car accident, if it was a natural disaster, or if it was the state that took his life. She was grieving her spouse and that moment was ruined for her. And she will never get those last few minutes with the love of her life back ever. As she was saying goodbye and he was being laid to rest, none of it matters what happened prior to that day. I don't care what happened before that. How dare anybody, anybody treat her like that, speak to her like that, and then imply there's gonna be another time I'm sorry, it gets worse. I'm so passionate about this video, but it gets worse, let's keep going. Bradford also indicated that she had been inconvenienced by having to be present at the church that evening. At one point told Alan, I'm letting you be with him, I don't have to. According to the church's website, it partners with the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, which is also known as TDCJ to help families affected by the death of offenders and executions. Bradford is the church's liaison for families that have a loved one that have passed away in TDCJ, according to the website. Okay, enough with the pictures, okay? Bradford is heard saying in the clip. She continues, normally we've been stopping y'all from coming inside the church because this is not the time or the place for that. The time or the place for what? Morning? Yeah, that's what your job is. That's what you're being paid to do. You're being inconvenienced by doing your job. What? When one person tells her that Alan has asked them to take pictures, Bradford replied, I don't care what she says. We're the people that are in charge here. She added, next time, if we let you in, don't wear your shirts, okay? Or we will not let you in at all. One of Alan's supporters then asked her, our shirts offend you? This is not the time or the place for that, Bradford replied. Remember, they're wearing shirts that say abolish the death penalty. They can stop taking pictures. They can stay. Enough is enough. 
This is not the time for this. She's here grieving and that's what she needs to be, saying goodbye. And y'all are doing nothing but taking pictures while she's standing here grieving. She asked us to, one of the women repeated to Bradford. And I'm asking you to stop, Bradford replied. Let me tell you what happened at my mother's funeral, just to give you a difference in somebody who treated a grieving spouse and family properly with the respect they deserve, laying that person to rest in peace no matter what your belief. He deserves to rest in his final destination in peace and she deserves as his widow to say goodbye properly. I don't care what his life was. I don't care. We didn't have enough chairs at the burial. It started pouring down on us. The woman who ran the funeral home did not leave my father's side. If she needed a decision made, she would ask the question to my father, basically to my family, but then look at me because she knew that I was kind of making decisions for my dad that day because he was grieving. Your head's in the clouds. You're a disaster. You just lost the person who is the closest to you that you love more than anything else in this whole entire world. We were going to be 15 minutes late for the repast because the rain started at the burial. She said, no problem. I got it. Called the people, made arrangements for extra parking, made arrangements for my dad to spend another 20 minutes in the funeral home with my mother because he couldn't bear to say goodbye at that point. They were on it. They had tissues. They had mints. They had water. They had anything that my family needed, anything that we requested. They went above and beyond and over the top. Why? Because that's their job. Their job is to make it as pleasant as possible for grieving families. This woman has to remember her last moments with the person she loves more than anything else in the whole entire world like this, being berated, being taunted, being told that she's not allowed to wear a certain shirt or the next time she comes in, the next time? How dare that woman? One of the activists then says she's happy to leave, adding, I'm not here to cause more stress, but you could also be a little bit more nice. Then Bradford says, well, like I say, I didn't have to let you come in. I had to take the day, my day time, to come in here today. And then Danny speaks up and her voice is quivering and she's getting extremely emotional, of course, because What's the one thing that you do when you're sad? You could flip and you become angry. So she turns to this woman, Miss Bradford, and she says, excuse me, you had to take your day? Your day? Her voice again was quivering and breaking. It's heart wrenching. I'm letting you be with him. I don't have to, but I am because this is what we do. Bradford replies. When Alan asks for her name, she declines to give it. Why aren't you giving your name if you're doing your job so right and you're the martyr for taking your day to let somebody view their dead spouse and you're inconvenienced and now you're being a capital B. When the lady doesn't give her name, Danny says, it doesn't matter, I'm gonna find out. The love of my life was just killed. She ruined my last time, my last minutes with him. Danny also turns to Newsweek and she said that the woman, Miss Bradford, absolutely ruined her moment to say goodbye to her fiance. She added that Bradford was mad about the shirts and had told her she had to take the day off of work. She was ruthless, she added. What a perfect example of someone who's going through the motions to make themselves feel better not anyone else. And I dare to say I am not the first person that she's treated in such a ruthless manner. The woman who turned me onto this story said that that church is notorious for being rude and hurtful and aggressive towards families who have lost loved ones in the Texas prison system. Now, Texas is notorious for being an awful prison system. There's a whole documentary which talks about the food there, the way that inmates are treated there. And also I did a video last year about the heat, the summer in Texas prisons. There's no AC. The heat index gets up above 110 degrees. Inmates are restless. They're aggressive and also they die. It's so hot and there's no air. So I'll post that video up there so you guys can watch it after you watch this video. Apparently, according to the Texas Department 
Department of Corrections. They said that the agency has taken action to ensure that Ms. Bradford is no longer involved in the viewing process. Now this is a statement by Robert Hurst, who's a spokesperson for the Texas Department of Corrections. The woman in the video is not an employee of the Texas Department of Corrections, nor does she represent the views of the agency. Loved ones should have the opportunity to grieve. The agency has addressed the issue to ensure she is no longer involved in the viewing process and moving forward, Texas Department of Corrections chaplains will remain on site to ensure this does not happen in the future. And then the church where this happened that's notorious for being evil towards these people, <laughs> an evil church in handling the family members in the Texas Department of Corrections. That's a mouthful. I'm not kidding. You guys it just took me four times to say that. Bear with me. The church is named Grace Baptist Church. They were contacted for comment by this reporter and they, I'm assuming as of the date of this article being written, it hasn't been updated. They refused. They declined. My heart is broken for this woman. The very least that I could do was share her story on this platform so we can bring more awareness to the unjust treatment of these families, of this woman, of these families. Federal government just green-lighted federal executions to start again. Just this past week, the first one was done. The inmate that was being executed literally said as he was being walked to the chambers, you're killing an innocent man. And it has been known in the past towards the end people usually typically will eventually admit to what they did they will have some sort of confession prior to being executed so if a man goes out saying you're killing an innocent man it's heartbreaking You yeah, have such a beautiful love. Okay, enough with the pictures, okay? Uh, normally, we have been stopping y'all from coming inside the church because this is not the time or the place for that. She backs up the pictures. Well, I don't care what she says. Okay. We are the people that are in charge here. And so, and next time, if we let you in, don't wear your shirts, okay? Or we will not let you in at all. Our shirts are friendly. This is not the time or the place for that. We can move from a protest. Okay, come on, y'all. Okay. They can stop taking pictures, they can stay. Enough is enough. Okay, this is this is not the time for for this. She is here grieving, and that's what she needs to be saying goodbye. Okay? And y'all are doing nothing but taking pictures while she's standing here grieving. She asked us to. I and I'm asking you to stop it. Okay, I right. will ask you to leave. Please. Okay. I'm not here to leave. I'm not here to talk more stuff. Good. But you could also be a little bit more nice. Well, like I say, I didn't have to let you come in. I had to take the day, my day time, to come up here today. So, excuse me. Okay. Do you have to take your day? No, come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm letting you be here if I don't have to, but I because this is what we do. What is this thing? No, 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 don't matter. Oh, it doesn't matter to me. Oh, God, I'll find out. It don't matter. Oh, no. I'm just going to go to my wife. Is this going to be for you? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. He's being donated. He's, he's being donated. She's, it's already been done. Honey, because they told me today that, that the paperwork hadn't gone in. Yes, we have it. We have it. Isn't that what you wanted? That's what you wanted. Okay, that's what he wanted. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's what's happening. He's going to be donated. His, his life will live on through someone else. Isn't that what you want? Yeah. Like, let's not, don't waste your time with her right now. Spend your time with your boy. Yes. You know, you don't have a lot of time now. No, but I'm going to take care of this. <laughs> she ruined my last time. My last minutes with him. No, I didn't ruin it. Your your friend up. He asked your friends here. He no, they didn't. Shut up. up. She was part of it. I don't know. She went to a college. So she wants to change. That's it. Here we go. 
My heart is with Danny and her family. Please leave her love in the comments below. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. I feel as if this will probably be a controversial one. Again, I do not know anything about the case and I honestly don't care about the case. That's not what this is about. I hope and pray that the statement by the prison is actually true because we know how that goes sometimes and those chaplains have hearts and are trained in a manner that can genuinely help these grieving widows, family members, etc. If you guys are interested in that video I did about AC and the lack thereof in Texas prisons, and all of the corruption actually in Texas prisons that I made last year, click that video there. If you're interested in another video with me, click there. If you're not already subscribed, I would love if you do that. The more people that subscribe here and give this video a thumbs up, the more YouTube will push this out and get this story out there for this woman. This is the least I could do is use my platform to do that for her. Click that little circle there, or you could always do it by clicking the red box below. Share this video. Let's get some eyes on this story. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one with a lot more bright and cherry topic, but unfortunately, these are the realities of our lives, and these are the things that happen. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.